Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I am Jeffrey. I'm Keith. And the rest of you are very lucky to be joining us on a very special adventure right here in the shallow water. Hopefully you all will be able to hear me okay. We are kind of down in the shop. Uh, it's been a busy day. We've got a lot of uh, power tools and things going off um, off to the side of us here. So hopefully you will be able to continue, continue to hear me. Um, if you can't, Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Or maybe or just volume. try adjusting your volume. Um, but awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and watching us today. We do have some fun stuff that we're going to talk about. Um, but while we're letting everybody jump on, Keith, what's been going on, man? How's your week? Good. Chrysler yeah. Keith. Chrysler so far, Keith. The Chrysler is running good. <laughs> All right. And nothing's jumped up and bit me, but you know what? Well, there's yeah. always the next couple days that we still have. But as of right now, Everything's going good. So I, just, I just can't keep myself slowed down. I'm trying right. to go too fast. You're trying to go too trying fast. Trying to go too fast. Right. So last week we were out on the boat, cooking. Cooking. Did you uh, did you feel any ill effects? Was that too no. was that too much of a? No, that was nice. That was nice. That was good and relaxing. It was nice and relaxing. Outing. Like I'm not gonna. I worry about dragging you through the mud. Nope. I was good. We Killing were good. You. We didn't. No. Nope. Good. Well, I thought it was an excellent. Uh, an excellent little outing, and you made those really excellent little, little uh, quesadillas for us, and we had a good little our, time. Our little camp chef worked good on those little quesadillas. Abs absolutely. Ambry picked out some great little salsa for us to try, <laughs> yes, and a bunch of different time. kinds of cheeses, but we'll yes. have to see what we do next. And as usual, we are going to be answering your questions. Since we're down here in the shop, we've, act we've also got at hand some of our, our best texts are really close, so if there are any questions that Keith can answer, as usual, We'll call Ian. We'll call Ian in, exactly, because Ian always knows everything. And we all love to catch that rare glimpse. It's like seeing a unicorn. <laughs> yes, exactly. When you catch a glimpse of Ian. Especially when he knows we're on the show. <laughs> it's like he just disappears. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a cloud of smoke. It really is. But, but hey, uh, we, love, we love Ian. He's a great guy. Absolutely. A lot of fun. He's just a little camera shy. No, and he's the one that makes sure that everything really is perfect. He keeps everybody in line, including you, Keith, and me as well. So uh, we're lucky to have somebody yes. like him going. Um, so before we jump into our uh, mission of the day, I do have a couple of things I do want to bring up. Um, first off, the accessory line is, is full bore. Like full We bore. are on right now. Everybody who's kind of been waiting um, to get all of those, those pieces in, they are all in. We are fully stocked. We've got tons of pieces. Everything is ready for you, so definitely go on and uh, you can buy everything you ever dreamed of from Scotty right now. So we have the knobs, we have the brackets. We've got the knobs, the bolts, black, the brackets. Pink, well, no pink or green. There's black no pink and green. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have all that stuff. And you know what? We got to use some of that stuff last week. Uh, I oh. wish the fishing would have been a little bit better, but you know what? Man, but the it's rest of early. was really awesome, though. Yes. Those pieces are really nice. They fit on so easily. They snap right on, come right off are completely easy to move. So those are really, really fun, and you can get them now, so don't, don't, uh, hesitate. don't hesitate. There's no reason to wait now. They're all there. So go on and grab those. Um, also, I want to talk about um, this, this flooding in Nebraska. Have you been following this, Keith? This, A little bit. This is crazy out there. And uh, I had some people send in, in fact, Jeff Mullenix, I don't know if you're watching, Jeff, but if you are, thank you for sending in that video. He sent me a couple pieces of video today. Actually, they might have gone to video yesterday, but um, I'm just floating past some of these houses that are almost completely underwater. It's just, it's terrible out there right now. Um, and I just want to do a big old shout out um, to everybody who's been helping out um, in all of those flood areas um, that we have, um, we have the biggest respect for you and we really appreciate all the help that you're giving to everybody is really tough out there. And those with with these motors and these boats are really in a prime position to be able to assist. And so all of you who are out there helping, please send me a message. We've got some stuff we're gonna send out to you. So uh, thank you everybody. But if you definitely keep keep an eye out because I'm gonna post these videos, they, they're crazy. Make sure you send it to Jeffrey, not to Keith. <laughs> I have enough to do. Oh. <laughs> yes, Keith has a lot to do napping in his office. I'm not going to say I haven't rested a little bit with the condition that I have. 
The condition you have. My condition. The Chrysler yes. condition. The Chrysler uh, condition. Exactly. I don't want to catch that. No, you don't. No, I really don't. I myself though, have been battling my own Chrysler Keith <laughs> moment, though. I, have, you know, maybe you can hear it in my voice. It's not just the echoey. It really is um, awesome. So that's so that's something I want to talk about. The third thing before we get going, and I'm just keeping you all in suspense. I know. Um, did you catch? Catch and release yesterday, Keith. I did. You, you I, did. We, you we watched caught, it. We caught the last few minutes of uh, Jay Paul and Jeremy, or Jeremy and Jay Paul. Yes. The one guy can't see, and the other guy is really so tall. So this is exactly what I <laughs> want to talk about. So as some of you know, um, our sister company XL Boats have started their own similar show to ours. I don't want to use the word spin-off because maybe that's not correct. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Copycat, Copy Copy Cat, maybe, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but they've got their own show. It's called Catch and Release. It runs on Tuesdays live on their Facebook channel. And it stars their hosts are J. Paul Jackson, our good friend, and Jeremy Coe, who is our new good friend. Really, really excellent. They put this show together. It's really, really awesome. And yesterday was their second episode. And um, I have a few things to say. Do you have a few things to say? I do have a, just a few <laughs> things to say. First <laughs> off, and J. Paul may be mad at me. He was like, hey, send me a message before you go live so I can watch. And I totally forgot. But um, hey, He knows what time we go on. No, he it's really does. Time, but listen, same he, channel. in two weeks, two weeks in a row, he <coughs> has made a couple of comments about my lack of hair. He uh, loves to point out that I'm, that I'm bald. Um, and so I just want to, you know, let all of our bald friends out there, I want you all to know that this is the show to be supporting. Go ahead and take off your your hat. See, this is where those who have no hair, this is where we live. This like is your home. This is where you should be. And for all the rest of you with your big heads of hair, you go and have yourselves a fine good old time over a catch and release. I like to keep just a little bit of fuzz on during the winter because it's cold. But during, yes. the, during the summer, I usually pick it clean. Yes. Try not to sunburn it too much. Oh, that's the worst. Um, Speaking of sunburning your head, never mind. I'm not going to get into that. We'll we'll get into that a little bit later. The other thing that he that made me laugh really bad yesterday is that he, um, Jeremy and and Jay Paul are about the same height, but Jeremy is quite a bit younger yes. than Jay Paul is. Just like I am quite a bit younger than you. Yes. Ah. But I think Jay Paul is old enough to be Jeremy's dad. That is and true. I don't think I'm old enough to be your. No, dad. you are not. So. Although Jay Paul's I'm, got me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> but they were out, they were there and they're looking at the phone and doing like we normally do. And Jeremy asked him a question and Jay Paul's like, Whoa, where's my glasses? I can't read. Just like you. And it made me laugh. I was like, the similarities are awesome. So do check them out. They're really, really awesome. Boy, we do appreciate um, them. They've been really nice to us so far. All the competition so far is very friendly. Very friendly. Um, it could get ugly. But it I think could get ugly as time goes by, but they will be on the uh, uh, the XL Facebook page. If you don't follow that page, go on and follow that now and check them out. It's fun. And they make sure, make cool sure guys, you like and share both our pages. Yes, absolutely. You know? If you like the show, please let us know. Uh, we love all the likes and all the shares and all of your comments and all of your suggestions. Yes, really, we, really we've had some good that. suggestions. Oh, yeah. Um, there's some stuff coming up probably mid to late May that we'll oh, be doing. Oh, yeah. We've got some fun stuff some planned fun stuff for planned. this uh, summer series. Yes. We're officially in summer now. I mean, not summer, but the summer series. It's supposed to show. snow on Friday, but don't, we're in the summer, summer series. Don't even jinx us like that. It's so horrible. <coughs> all right. Enough of that. I am going to pull out my phone and start checking out some questions, comments. You lead us into what we're going to do today. You sure? I, I yeah, dare Tell you. me I was <laughs> right. oh, So no. what we're going to do today is kind of go through our final procedure of, of checking the motor. What we're going to do is we have a checklist that we go through. We're going to go through and make sure that as the motor starts out in frame assembly, um, engine, Transmission, yes. drive, wiring, the whole nine yards. This is where everything's tested. Ambry made us a cute little whiteboard here that we'll go through some of these things. So all of our motors go through a quality check. Yes. And we make sure, to the best of our abilities, that when it leaves this room, it goes over to crating and it's on its way to you. It's plug and play and go. Right. So, and there's a lot of things that are very important that we check. And one of them, 
that uh, is most important is making sure the name of the customer yes. matches the name that's on the motor <laughs> and your serial and numbers. And your serial match. numbers, yes. Because you don't want to send the wrong yeah. motor to the wrong person. And I'm not going to say it's ever happened before, <laughs> <clears throat> but just in case. And that's one way we can tell. And every station, when your motor comes to you, has the uh, little checkoff list here. And on that checkoff list, each person, when they get this checkoff list, this is a motor we're building for stock. Right. It gives the serial number and the Briggs serial number. Right. So these are checked every time this motor goes around. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, seven stations. All seven stations, when they get this motor, pull this paper up and look and verify. And verify. Because we don't want to get the motor all the way around to final inspection and find out, hey, it's a short transom and it's supposed to be a tall. Right. So we catch those things before they get to here. So when they get to here, Ian usually runs them and he's also got a backup uh, gentleman, the name yes. of, I just forgot his name, he doesn't write out the way, Trent. Those two guys do most of all of our testing. Right. And make sure that everything works. So cool. That's kind of what we're gonna do. That's just kind of walk through that. Right. So you're gonna things. show us, we're gonna kind of, <clears throat> wrap up or finish this motor right here yeah we're gonna, we'll uh, checklist this we'll, what, are we, what are we calling it we yeah, call it a checklist final check final check we'll do the running part i'm only going to do the running for a minute or so right just to show it goes in and out of gear we'll let ian or trent run through the full it's about a three to five minute run they run it in and out high rpm lower yes. rpms and do all that we're just going to run it make sure it goes into forward yeah. as neutral has reverse Momentary switch work. So we're going to check for the quick, obvious things. They'll give and you then we'll let the, we'll let the professionals, we'll let the actually professionals yes. do the real test. I used to later, be a professional, but it's been a few years. So now you have to be on camera. This is what happens. You start yeah. out really good, and then you have to go be on camera. Have to go, get, go bald and be on camera. Awesome. Because I had hair when I first started here. Okay. <clears> so <throat> listen. A um, couple of shout outs shout before outs, okay. we before we get going because there has been a, a little controversy happening while we've been uh, Not hanging between out. our friends. No, 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 no. Um, first off, Nicholas Emerson, our good friend, says this. <laughs> to start out, very first comment. Keith must have lost a bet to Jeffrey and had to wear the flat brim. <laughs> you know what? I oh, personally man. bought this <laughs> tangle free hat off their website last week. I have, you guys. And I, I like flat brim hats. I have converted him, everybody. Right. I don't want to hear this. Don't. I. Don't call, converted me, in. don't call me Jay Paul, the non-flat flat <laughs> brim wearer, or our friend Freddie King. He don't like the flat. No, brim he doesn't. I actually well, enjoy it. I do so. too. But a lot of our a lot of our guys are are not enjoying it so much either. And Travis was just like, well, yeah, that's no change because I always win. You always lose to me. Right. Um, <coughs> and go out and check out Tangle Free's website. They've got great sales. I picked <laughs> up the hat in the gray and then the black. They were five bucks a piece. Oh yeah. So, no, you know, uh, they're so great. Those guys, um, one of our biggest sponsors, they're really great. I love everybody over at Tangle Free. Um, Corey Meacham is like, flat brim is not right, needs some bend in the hat. So nope, he's, no not, bend. he's not with it. If you want one, you buy it, you bend it. I'm saying flat. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Connie's watching. Hey, Connie, hope hey, you're Connie. still on. She says, hey, Key. Um, Connie, it's good to have you on here. Um, welcome to the shallow water. Yes. <laughs> Wherever you are. Wherever you may be. You might want to put your hat back on. Oh, they want you to put your hat back on. The glare is a lot off your head, they're saying right now. There's a, there's a gesture that's going through my mind right about now, and I'm just going to keep oh, it to myself. Oh, man, that is fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, Corey, I'm going to send you. Not my tangle free not hat. Not your tangle free oh. hat. No, that's, that's not for you. But how about this one? How about that tangle free hat? Corey. Um, that's awesome. I really appreciate it. Click the link at the top of the description, and we're gonna get that set up. The nice tangle-free waxed works good in the moisture. It nice really hat. is. That's that is a, a really sweet hat. Actually. Is it Mecham? Yes. Mecham? Yep. Okay. Um, a question though, before we get going on, TJ Owens, what is recommended time on fluid changes? Uh, Twenty-five to fifty hours. It just depends. If you've got a performance engine. You're running a little bit hotter. I would run 25 hours. If you've got a stock one, you could go up to 50, but I would change it. Yeah. Me personally, it's over 25 hours. Sure. It's a, it's 20 something dollars. It's not a big deal. You know, you spend that much money, what's 20 bucks every so often? 
Exactly, exactly. Um, Rick uh, Hillicoss is on. What's going on, Rick? He had a question that Travis, who is also on, just answered for us. Thanks, um, Travis. He asked, what's the largest boat you would run a mini on? And Travis replied, uh, 14 to 16 yes. feet, which yep. is correct. That's what we would say as well. Good advice, Travis. Thank you, Travis. He's, he's good. He, gets, he answers these before we ever get to them, so I appreciate it. Um, Okay, so let's do it. Let's start this little process. Walk us through it um, slowly, slowly for, for the for, for those of us for those slow <laughs> viewers. Do you think our viewers are slow? No, no that's not what I'm saying. Not at all. All right, so, let's go through it. So what we've already done, we've already hooked up the fuel. We've hooked up the battery. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get really up close. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Grab a paper towel. Nobody what likes that. Okay, yeah. I'm going to. What are the first here. things you always want to do? Even when you get a motor from us, we ship the motors with oil in them already. But always, always, always hold the dipstick, give it a wipe, give it a check, and make sure you have oil. And we have oil. So now we're, we're good, we're good to start it. So I've done that part of it. What I'm gonna do next is try to put the dipstick dipstick back in there. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna check off right here. We got oil and engine. Oil and engine. What's the very first one I should have started out? Wiring and cabling is neat and to specifications. Yes. So we've got the nice run throttle cable. All the wiring back on this side looks good. Everything's plugged in. It's got all of its terminals are connected. Everything looks really good on the wiring side of that. Great. I'm gonna put a check. Then we're going to go... No paint, scratches, or dents. Or dents. And that's what I usually do towards the end when I pull it out of here because we're a little bit confined. I can tell you the handle looks good. What I can see looks good, but when I get it outside, I guess do we'll, a demo. we'll do a, a, a final and make sure we get the drive and the belt box and all of that kind of stuff. Great. Um, uh, work order. Work yes. order is serial number. So we're going to pull it out. This motor is a... Oh, it's actually going to Excel Boats. Yeah. Oh, hey, I, let's see. Okay, so we're looking for complete product matches, serial yes. number matches, and paint options matches. Yes, so this okay. one is brown, which is correct. The serial number, don't tell me the serial number. Pull out my glasses. <laughs> see, I brought them though. Okay, but nobody wants to stare at the back of your head though. I know. <laughs> so we're at the 28109. We're at 28109. And the power code is, where did they put the power code stickers? Okay, 149, and it matches. Right. So everything okay. matches there. So we're pretty much just now going to run into, I'm going to check the trim. I'm going to make sure our trim. Trim. Then we push the down button, it goes, it down, goes down. And when we push it up, it goes up. We want to make sure that that's functioning because we don't want you to get it and it's reversed. It's pretty quick and easy to figure out if yeah, it is, it needs, it's but it be needs right. to be right here. Okay, I got the trim um, switch. What about the belt tension? Belt tension, I'm gonna do the belt. We'll do the belt tension afterwards because we need to check with the plug. Got it. Being we're a little bit confined in here. Okay. Yeah, the belt tension down here. But Perfect. that'll be, we'll do that one of the last things that we'll do. We'll run a belt tension tester in there. Okay, got it. What so about, we're, let's we're at the point where let's just fire it up and make or sure it was that momentary. Where's our momentary? We could do that first. Oh, okay. that so where did you put it? Where? Second, Second one down. Momentary oh, switch right okay. here. Does the momentary. So, since we got to turn it on. Turn and fire that button. So you hear that clicking? That's the clutch. Got That's it. a forward clutch where it's a neutral. A big clunk. That's the electric magnet. So the, Great. The, the everything dry is working. Now we'll fire this. This is a what? What is this? This is an HDR50. So this is the big yes. bass. This is what's on the salty.
this is an EFI, so it's controlled by the ECM, so that's good. Okay. Um, I ran, it, I only ran it up to about 38, 3900, just because of the combined area and the right. smell. But so they'll we, actually, yeah, they will, they, they will, will check that, check that. And make sure that we go through that. Okay. So all of that part so far, we're doing really good. The idle kind of airflow and the carburetor, this one doesn't really apply because we're in EFI. Okay. But if you had an old carburetor style version, we're going to make sure the idle is where it needs to be and also the air fuel mixture is right and those things. Um, Got it. No excessive noise. No, noise was good. How about vibration? No vibration. Okay. Safety lanyard. It was on. You know what? Um, That's one thing I didn't check though, so hold on for a second. Ah, ah it worked! Woo. It worked! Boy, talk about making you sweat for about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I have faith in our guys. I always do a really great job. We had audible reverse engage. Yes, you can hear it engage. Yes, you heard that okay. clunky sound. Yep. The 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 uh, we've got the the noise the the leak in the transmission. We're gonna have to pull it out, pull the back cover off, and check that. Okay. And at the same time, the belt tension. Got it. And, and then I, we'll make sure that that happens. Yes. And then the, the guys will run it in reverse three to four minutes. So when you get your new motor, it'll have anywhere from four to seven or eight minutes on the tack already. Right. And that just lets everybody know, we've gone through what Mud Buddy qualifies as our final procedure before yes. it rolls out of this room and then goes into crating, where it goes to crating and then it goes to its final destination, wherever that one is. This one will probably be in Excel probably in about two weeks. Yeah. So. Um, and we do this to every motor. Every motor, no yes. motor goes by without this inspection. It's just, that's not worth it. You may save five minutes by not doing it, but that five minutes, is, right. it's not worth it. Super important. So yeah, it's something that we do. Every paper, every motor has the paper. The papers are turned in so we can quality control. If there's something that happens, we note it, we check it, yes. and we address any kind of issues that we might have. Absolutely. So, it's a simple, quick procedure, but it's probably the most important one we can do. Absolutely. It really is. Because we, Enrique, Mike, and myself, we don't want customers calling up because we didn't run the thing and check it and make sure that simple the job checks. was a simple check. And it is. Yes. It is a simple check. Right. It's a few minutes of, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. easy. Yeah. We can teach Ambry to do it. No, we Yes, could. we could. <laughs> Because all you got to do good. is follow the paper. Yeah. Follow the steps, follow the procedures, and you're good, really. Yep. Good. Well, awesome. That's, that's, uh, that's helpful. It. I hope you all found that as informative as I did. Um, I do have a question from Brandon Smith. Uh, how much does a 5,000, oh, let's see, that's not the one I was looking at. Then Hoffman, sorry, how high is the RPM on the 5,000? It'll run up to 4,700 RPM. In the water, you're probably going to be mid 4000s yes. you know you don't ever want to run it as as much rpm as you can right i always keep it down a couple hundred rpm it's just life life will last longer on your motor if you don't run it to the full rpm it's capable of. right right absolutely you know, it's like your car that you ship for a reason <laughs> <laughs> You do? Chrysler. Yeah, Chrysler, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I even had a Chrysler when, my, when I was a kid. It was a push button transmission on the dash. Wow. It was amazing. Oh, Never got to drive it, I was too young still, so sure. And had seat belts, you know? Put your arm out in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So. Um, but Brandon Smith, did, uh, he did ask how much it does a 5,000 power head cost. And on that, Brandon, I am not sure. I'm going to have to get back to you on route. 10 threes out with the power head. Is. Oh, just the, are you I talking about the, are you really talking about just an engine, Brandon? Uh, yes. So I'm not sure on that, Brandon, but um, we will clarify that and get that info to you. I didn't mean to ignore you there. Um, Paul Collins, what prop is the best in the Southern Marsh? Uh, two blade or a three blade? Are you duck hunting or fishing? The su a southern, I don't know what a southern marsh is. I mean, is it lily well, pads? I'm guessing mud? probably in this area, which would be kind of that. Uh... Look, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to look at the camera, Keith. Oh, okay. Um, if you're running a lot of mud and a lot of vegetation, I, the two blade is going to be the way to go. If you're if you're out there 
a little bit deeper water, you're not in the mud and, and that so much, a three blade's gonna be a great prop too. Yes. You know, so it just depends. Heavy loads, yeah, if you're heavy boat, a two blade. A two blade's gonna be better. If you're if you're worried about being really down low in that mud and in that vegetation, you're gonna want that. And, two and blade. We'll, the next time we take the salty out, we're going to put a three blade on it. Yeah. And we'll have both both blades so we can do a little bit of testing. Yeah, we're and gonna see what kind of RPM and what kind of speed we can get on the salty because we're past that break-in point finally. Oh, we it sure took us are. all <laughs> year, but we finally got past the break-in point. Um, what's the weight between the 44 and a, and the 5,000? The weight on that, they're the same. They're right about 310, 315 pounds. Yes. They really don't change much just because of the uh, cc's of your engine changes. From a 35 horse to a 50 horse, the engine weight is still the same. Right. Yeah, so uh, Brandon Smith, he was talking about just the motor. Just the motor. Um, call Clint, 801 352 8011. Ask for Clint Hovey, and he can help you out on the pricing of that motor. Yes. Good answer. Okay. Oh, Jeff Fuchs is on. Hey, Jeff, how's it going? He says, it's been a few weeks. Yes, it has. Where have you been, Jeff? Working? So rude. I'm missing our show. We only do this show for you, Jeff. I mean, come on. Um, but that's about it. We're going to end it there, I think. Um, but just to recap, everybody, do, if you get a chance, go check out Catch and Release on the XL Boats Facebook page. Every Tuesday, they're going to do that show live. Um, next week, they're going to be out... Actually, I'm not sure where they're going to be next week. I know tomorrow, though, they're going to do a special live video from Kentucky Lake. Um, and I believe they're even going to have Jeff Dodd. I don't know if you're a big Jeff Dodd fan, but I kind of like fangirl out just a little bit with I Jeff Dodd. He is, is one he of fisherman? the best cat fishermen in oh, the world right Does he use now. a pole or he use his arm? Uh, he'll use, it doesn't matter. He'll catch him. He'll catch him. However he does it. No, he's, he's really, he's such a great guy. And um, he, he has one of XL's most beautiful boats. Red and white, uh, brand new Cat 230. Yeah. It's his beautiful boat, and I think they're going to be out there with him. So definitely keep an eye on the XL's uh, Facebook page. Cause not too much, but a little bit. I mean, a little bit alone. Yeah, not, not too much. I'm not saying, I mean, don't turn traitor because you know we're watching. But uh, do check that out. They are really going to be awesome. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. We're going to be probably out on the water next week. So tune in uh, next week, same bad time, same bad channel. We will see you then right here.